click the bell icon to turn on notifications. We've made the files the instructor uses in this tutorial available for free. Just click the link below in the video details to get these. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course on Word 2019 Advanced. We're down in section 21 where we're looking at forms in Word. And in the previous module, I showed you how to create a basic form template. And this is the one that you can see on the screen just here. Now what we're going to do in this module is we're going to go through and we're going to start adding some content controls to our form. And this is really where forms take life. Now I will say that it's not absolutely necessary to add content controls in, but it does make it a lot easier for whoever you've sent this form to, whoever's filling it out, to know exactly what they need to put in and where. And it's also good for you because content controls really do control the type of information that's going into that form. So it might be that, for example, with this first field here, the date field, if you send this form to 10 different people, if you're not controlling how that date is input, then you may have 10 different ways of having the date written out. Some people might do it in the long form, some in the short form, some in US format, some in European format, which makes your life a lot more difficult. What's a lot better is to put in a control so that they only have one option to select. So you ensure that the information going into your form is consistent and also error free. And that is where content controls are particularly useful. So we're going to go through this form and we're going to add in content controls for each of our form items. And the first one we're going to add in is for this date. Now, as I explained to you in the first module, you'll find all of your content controls on the developer ribbon in the controls group just here. Now, something that's important to note when it comes to these controls you basically have two different types of control. And if I click this little drop down here, you'll see because they're in two separate groups. You have legacy forms and active X controls. And you'll find that between these two groups, a lot of them are repeated. So I can see here that underneath legacy forms, I have a checkbox form field, but I also have that same form field underneath active X controls. So why do we have two different groups? Well, legacy form fields are pretty much what they say on the tin. They are legacy tools which are kind of left over from older versions of Word. So these legacy form fields were available in Word all the way back to around Word 97. And the legacy form fields do have some advantages. For example, they are compatible with all versions of Word, as I said, all the way back to Word 97. They can also be used with formula fields to do calculations with macros. And what you'll also notice when we start to add in legacy form fields is that you can give them a unique bookmark name and you can then utilize that bookmark name in calculations such as if calculations in Word. Now, there are also some drawbacks with this. For example, when you add in a legacy form field, it doesn't become active until you protect your document. And in previous modules, we looked at document protection and you may or may not remember one of the options that we had when we were restricting editing was that we can lock down the document, but make an exception for filling out forms. So you must apply that protection in order for people to be able to utilize the legacy form fields. And I guess the most obvious restriction with these is that there's only a few of them. You can see below we have a lot more ActiveX controls. So we're somewhat limited with the legacy form fields or form controls that we have. Now the ActiveX controls, you'll find those in later versions of Word. And we have a more varied range of controls. So for example, with the ActiveX controls, we have a rich text content control, but we also have a plain text content control. So the rich text one will allow people to enter information into the form and also utilize formatting tools. So if they want to make it bold or whatever, they can do that with this control. They can insert pictures, they can insert quick parts, all different kinds of things. So a lot more varied when it comes to ActiveX controls. Now there is nothing stopping you from using a combination of both and that is what we're going to be doing in this particular form. So this first 
content control that we want to add is related to the date. So I'm going to make sure my cursor is clicked next to date. I'm going to go up to my controls and I can see just here the little calendar icon. If I hover over, it says date picker content control. So let's click to add. And you'll see what I get just here. It says click or tap to enter a date and then I get a little drop down which allows me to select my date. Now with all of these controls you can modify the properties so you can modify the way they look and also other properties of this control. So what I always do is as soon as I've entered it I make sure I've selected it, go up to my controls group and I click on the properties button. So this is going to allow me to view or modify the properties for the selected control. And for this particular control, the date picker, I have these options. So I'm going to give my content control a title. So I'm just going to call this date. I can then give it a tag. So as I mentioned previously, you can give your content controls tags and then you can utilize those tags in other areas, formulas, so on and so forth. So for this one, I'm just going to call it date underscore picker. I'm showing this as a bounding box, but I do have a couple of other options in there, which I will leave you to explore. In general, I tend to keep it on bounding box. I can change the color. Now, this isn't the color of the text or anything like that. This is actually the color of the bounding box. So if I was to select something really bright like red and just click on OK, you can see what it changes just there. Now, I'm not particularly interested in having that in red, so I'm just going to put that back to automatic. I can choose a style to format the text typed into the empty control. So if I select this, I can specify the font, the font size, exactly what I want that text to look like that's entered into this particular content control. Now, I don't want to do anything fancy just here, but I could go in and change all the font settings. I want it just to match the document, so I'm actually going to untick that. I can also choose to remove the content control when the contents are edited. So essentially, when the person completing this form has selected a date, it's going to remove this content control from the form. Now, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to leave that unticked. When it comes to lock-in, it says here content control cannot be deleted. So I might say, yes, I want to always have that content control there. Contents cannot be edited. Now, I want people to be able to edit the contents, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. I then get to choose my date format. So this is really where I'm locking people down to a very specific format. And for this, I'm going to choose this top one just here, a short date format. And then I have my locale, my calendar type, and some XML settings, which I'm going to leave on the default and click on OK. So that's all looking pretty good so far. But another thing I might want to do is have something a little bit more explanatory in here, or I at least might want to modify what this text says. So if I click on my content control, go up to controls and switch into design mode. This is going to allow me to edit that text in the middle there. So I might say, please enter today's date. Click the design mode button again to toggle back out. Now something else I might want to do is I might want to change the formatting of this piece of text. So I actually like these pieces of helper text to be in a slightly lighter color than the text that's entered. So I'm going to select my content control, but this time I'm just going to go to the home ribbon and I'm going to change my font color to a lighter gray, like so. Let's move down to employee ID. So here I want the person completing the form to just be able to free type in the employee ID. So back to the developer ribbon. And this time I'm going to select a text content control. Now I have two listed just here. The first one is rich text. So if I want them to be able to make the employee ID bold or italic, then I would choose that. But if I don't, I can just add a plain text content control. And again, you can see what it looks like. I can go to properties and I can add in my content control properties. So this one I'm going to call employee ID. I'm going to give it a tag of EMP underscore ID. 
and I'm going to keep all of these default settings and click on OK. But what I am going to do is again change this text, so I need to switch into design mode and then modify my text. And switch back out of design mode. And once again, I'm just going to change that formatting to a lighter grey colour. All good so far. Moving down, we have our first name and last name. So again, these are going to be text input fields. Now I'm going to do each of these in a slightly different way. We're going to go back to the developer ribbon and I'm going to utilize exactly the same field that we used for the employee ID. So I'm going to say plain text content control. I'm going to modify the properties. The title is going to be first name. The tag is going to be first underscore name and I'm going to leave everything as the default. Switch into design mode, enter first name. And again, apply that formatting. Now for the last name, I'm going to use the legacy tools because so far we've been using the ActiveX controls. And I'm really just showing you this to show you the difference between the two. So let's jump up to the developer ribbon. And this time I'm going to click the drop down and select from my legacy tools gallery. And the first one here is the text form field. And you can see immediately that that looks a lot different to when we enter in an ActiveX control. The area is shaded in the background. Now, if you don't want that shaded, you can jump back up to your legacy forms and this option just here, form field shading, you can toggle that off and you won't get that background shading. Now, I actually quite like it with the shading on, so let's toggle that back on. And again, I can jump into properties. And the properties that you get for legacy controls as opposed to ActiveX controls, again, is quite different. So in here, I get a text form field. It's asking me what type is going into this field. Well, for me, this is going to be regular text. I'm not entering in a number or a date. What is the default text that I want displayed? So I'm going to say enter last name. I can then choose a maximum length for that last name. So if I want to limit it to 20 characters, I can simply come into here and I can change the maximum length to whatever I need it to be. I can also choose my text format. So do I want it to be input in uppercase, lowercase, first capital, so on and so forth. So I'm going to say first capital. And then I have some options for macros. The field settings at the bottom allow me to have this as a bookmark and I can give my bookmark a name. So let's call it last name. I'm allowing them to fill in these fields. And if I had any calculations in here, I could select calculate on exit. The other thing I have down here is the option to add in some help text. So this might help the people filling out your form know exactly what they need to do. And you can add helper text into the status bar or as an F1 hotkey option. So for example, if I go to status bar, I might want to have showing in the status bar when they click on this field, enter into this field your last name and I might want the same thing if they press the F1 key so I'm going to copy that across to this field as well now when you click on OK and OK again if you look down in the status bar you won't see that help text that we've just added and that's because it's only going to come up once you've protected this form. But what we can see is our form field, and you can see how different it looks from the ActiveX control that we added. So it might be that now I want to make this look like the other form field. I'm going to click in enter last name, jump up to developer. I'm going to go to my legacy tools. And I'm going to turn off shading, and then I'm just going to change the font color to that light gray color. And you can see here it still looks slightly different, but it basically works in the same way. 
So, so far we've successfully managed to add content controls of different types into the top half of our form. In the next module, we're going to go through the rest of this form and explore some other content controls that you have available. So please join me for that. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course on Word 2019 Advanced. We're down in section 21 where we've been taking a look at forms in Word. And in the previous module, I was showing you how to add different types of content controls into your form. We're going to pretty much pick up where we left off in that module and carry on going through our form, exploring some more types of content control. So let's scroll down. We've got up to job title. Now what I want in here is I want to add a content control that's going to show a drop down list of the different job titles. So that means that whoever is completing this form can just select their job title from the list. They don't have to type it in. Once again, this ensures that all the content going into the form is consistent. So let's jump up to our developer ribbon and we're going to add this one here, a drop down list content control. So now we have the content control in there. If I click the drop down, it just says choose an item. So we need to edit this content control and tell it what we want to display in this list. So to do that, we jump up to properties. So once again, we need to give this content control a title. So this is going to be job title. The tag is just going to be job underscore title. I'm going to leave everything else on the default. But at the bottom here where it says drop down list properties, this is where I add in my list of job titles. So I'm going to click the add button. And the first one is going to be marketing assistant and click on OK. Click add again, sales manager. I'm going to add another one, HR assistant. And let's add one more, we'll say credit controller. And you can carry on going, adding items into your list. Also remember that you can change the order of this list. So if you want a particular item to be at the top of the list, you have the move up and move down buttons to help you with that. You can also remove any list items from here and go in and modify them as well. So let's click on OK. And what you'll see now is that if I click that drop down, I have those listed out. And once again, I'm going to switch to design mode and just change the text that I'm seeing here. Please select a job title from the list and switch out of design mode. And I'm going to change that to that light gray font. Let's do the same thing for department up to developer into our drop down list content control into properties. I'm going to give it a title of department tag is going to be DEPT and I'm going to add in my department names. So marketing, we're going to have sales and I'm just hitting enter here to select them. Let's have IT and also let's have finance and click on OK. Up into design mode and let's modify that text. And I'm going to change the formatting once again. Now for the following two, supervisor and date hired, again, we're going to be utilizing content controls that we've used before. So I'm going to use a drop down list one more time in here. And I'm going to add in some names of supervisors. So we'll have John Doe, Jane Doe, and that will do for the time being. Click on OK. Design mode. Please select the name of your supervisor. Come out of design mode and I'm going to change that font formatting. And then the final thing down here is date hired. So again, we're going to be using our date picker. So up to developer. And we're going to choose our date picker content control. 
I'm going to jump into the properties. We're going to give this a title of date hired. Tag date underscore hire. And I'm going to select the date format that I want to use, which is this top one just here. Click on OK. Into design mode. And there we go. So now you can see we're really starting to build a form that is really useful and helps people understand exactly what they need to type in each field. So let's move down because we have a couple of other types of content control that we're going to add. Now for job type, if you remember, we put this in a little table, so I'm going to make sure that I'm clicked in that second column. Now what I want to have here is I want to have some radio buttons or option buttons, I should say. So that is a different type of content control that we haven't utilized yet. So let's jump back up to developer. Now you find the options button underneath this drop down. It is an active X control and it's this one just here. So let's click. And this is what it looks like. So we get a little radio button and then we have option button one as the text, which of course we want to modify by jumping into properties. Now this time we get a completely different type of properties box. We have this properties pane open at the side, which allows us to modify literally everything about this little button. Now I'm not going to go through all of these options here. I am going to change a few of them though. So at the top here, the name of this button is going to be permanent. Now you'll notice when I name the button, it doesn't actually change the label. The label of the button is controlled by this caption property field. So if I want it to say permanent, I need to change it just here. Like so. Now I can do all kinds of things in here. I can change the font of this button. I can change the foreground color, the background color. So just to show you an example, if I change the background color, it looks something like that, which I don't actually want. And if I was to change the foreground color, that's going to change the, the font essentially. But I'm happy to keep mine on the defaults. Now I'm not going to change anything else about this button, so I'm just going to close down this properties box. I'm going to add another options button, so I'm going to click my mouse after this one, go back to my ActiveX controls and select option button. Jump back into properties and I'm going to call this one contract, that's the name. We're going to change the caption to contract as well and close. And then the final one that we want back up into properties is going to be temp. Change that caption again and click close. Now currently I'm still in design mode so I want to make sure that I toggle back out of there and if I test these buttons, if I click in permanent, it's going to let me select it. So a really nice little content control just there. Now these final two both utilize checkboxes, and this is yet another type of content control that you can add to your forms. So where it says, has this employee completed compliance training, I want a checkbox for yes and a checkbox for no. So I'm going to click next to yes, press my space, and if I go up to my controls, it's this option here that I want the checkbox content control. And once again, I can jump into properties for that control and define my properties. So I'm going to call this a uh, checkbox and the tag will be check underscore box underscore yes. And you'll see at the bottom here, I get to choose the checked symbol. So if I want to utilize another symbol for this, I can do that, but I'm pretty happy with how these defaults look. Click on OK for my checkbox. I'm going to do the same for no. Let's put a space in add in our content control and then modify our properties. So this is also a checkbox. And I'm going to call this checkbox no and click on OK. And I literally do exactly the same thing for these ones underneath. So very quickly, I'm just going to add those checkboxes in 
like so. And you'll see with these, if I click in them, I get a check. If I click again, it removes the check. So using those content controls very quickly, we've been able to create a really nice form and control everything that's going into that form. Now there are many, many other content controls that we haven't explored, and I would encourage you to create your own forms and have a play around with some of these to see which ones you're gonna use most often. But what I've tried to do here is just show you some of the most popular content controls that you'll see used in forms. In the next module, I'm gonna show you how you can add a submit button to the bottom of your form and write a little piece of VBA code so that when you click the submit button, it attaches this form as a Word document to an email ready to send out. So please join me for that. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.